Hi everyone, Charles here. In today's video, we're diving into an interesting topic. That's right, Google Dorks. We've already done a beginner's guide in this topic, and if you haven't seen that video yet, I will leave a link for it in the description below, so make sure to check it out. We will learn how they can be a powerful ally for enhancing your website security. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. But before we go any further, let's demystify Google Dorks real quick, just in case if, you're, if you haven't seen the first video. In the cybersecurity world, Google Dorks are search queries that uses special operators to find specific information on Google that's not easily available through simple searches. Now you may ask, how is this relevant to cybersecurity? Well, hackers often use Google Dorks to discover vulnerabilities on websites. So if we instead turn that table around and use Google Dorks proactively, we can actually spot, or at least spot some sort of potential weaknesses if it is there in our websites before someone else does. Especially if you're, you know, you're trying to secure your site or you're a bug bounty hunter who wants to help out the organization, get a reward even possibly, this thing can help you out. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So I have Google already pulled up on the screen right here. What we'll do as our first one is going to do a search that tries to find publicly accessible documents. Okay, so this is the query right here. You see a lot of extensions up top. It's looking for doc, uh, Word documents, PDF files, Excel documents. And I use Microsoft.com as a example for this. Well, yeah, I'm using Microsoft, uh, the site, as an example for this particular example. So the site is actually telling us to narrow down to a particular organization. We're using Microsoft, and then we're trying to see what kind of document they might have in Google. We see about a 270,000 uh, results when we do this. Obviously, you're gonna have to dig a bit further if needed to. If you see something, you can break it down by that. You can have something like not equals to and take something out. But what this command is doing is telling Google to search for specific type of files on a particular website. So the simple breakdown would be that this site, Microsoft.com, we're instructing Google to focus only on that specific website. We're using Microsoft as a placeholder. You could, uh, you could replace that with any particular site that you want to, with the actual website that you wanna search, right? All these extensions, like I was mentioning earlier, it's already just a command, uh, pretty much an instruction for Google to look for files with these particular extensions, which are common document formats, right? You know PDF, um, Word has this doc one right here, and then Excel has XLS. So now, this is where you would go and look through those things. I mean, obviously we're not gonna go through all 270,000 plus results, but this is something you can do during your hunting or trying to make your site a better. And you would go through these documents or read through them to see if you see anything suspicious or not. Right here, just because they all come up as a result doesn't mean that they're all vulnerable because they could be just there as a public view. They are going to have a big company like this or a big corporation like this will have some sort of documentation for the public view. So do not take all these as something vulnerable, but go through this list on any site, not just Microsoft, but see if you can find anything vulnerable and you can report it to them and be able to get their hall of fame or if you're doing a bug bunch on a different place that gives you a reward, possibly even go for a reward. But this is one of the commands that you can do because publicly accessible documents can be extremely valuable information for someone with malicious intent. They might contain internal information, financial data, personal information even, or other sensitive data that shouldn't be publicly accessible. So when you're using this Google dork as a website owner or administrator, you can actually discover if the site is accidentally exposing sensitive documents or not. And if it is, secure them before someone else finds them, someone that's not ethical. Okay, so with that being said, let's move over to our next Google dork. Pretty simple, right? It's only using an entitled index.of. That's what we're using, or index.of. This dork can actually help you discover directory listings. These listings could give away information about any files or folders on a server. A directory listing, if you don't know, is essentially a web page that lists all the files and folder present in a specific directory on the server. These listings, right, are typically auto-generated by the server when there's no index file. 
an example would be like when I'm doing bug bounty hunting, I try to look to see if there's any index.html or index.php. So if they're not present, you know, doing a search on Google can't hurt. And if these directory listings are enabled, which is often the default setting on many servers, they can expose a very wealthy or very wealth of information to anyone who stumbles upon them. These informations might include, and is not limited to, file names, file types, file sizes, and the date and time of like last modifications. Like that, those are some of the information that you might see. Now, when you're looking at these type of information, you do have to keep in mind, just like before, that sometimes these listings are benign and intentional. They're intentionally put out there. I, well, during my bug bounty hunt searches, I have seen messages up top that they are there intentionally for public view. So if I reported on them, they would just deny it at that point. So you have to be aware of this, that when you're looking for these things, just because you see this directory, doesn't mean that it's actually vulnerable. Go through what's there, and it might be time consuming, but that's where the information gathering comes in. You go through these things to find anything that other researchers might not look for, just in case if it is taking too much time. But if you spend the time to it, you might actually come across inadvertently uh, and, and see some sensitive information such as like backup files, archive files, hidden files, or directories, even files containing code or configuration information, and so on. As an example, this is something that you might be able to see, like this right here. That's something as an example that I, you know, when I, when I did this search, you know, I came across a page that had these kind of directory listings. If I was doing the research on it for bug bounty hunting, I would go through these files to see if there's any sort of passwords or anything, something sensitive that's not supposed to be there. All right, I hope this makes sense. So let's go ahead and move over to our next part of the Google Doc query. All right, so now what we have is finding exposed configuration files, right? It's kind of similar to what we saw. It's not really fully similar, but what I mean by similarity is that I'm using extension query again. What this dork will do is it'll try to help you finding exposed configuration files this time that may contain sensitive information, such as login credentials or possibly even database, database passwords from database connection strings. And an example would be something like this. We're using a robots.txt. Obviously, you can type it in when you're doing a search on this on the page, but this is something that can come up. And if you put a site, for example, and then you give it a a site right here, I'm using just .com to show every single search that may be there or not, uh, that comes up with .com for this particular example, not using an actual website, but you would change that here to put like, let's say Microsoft or Tesla or Amazon or Expedia, whatever the case may be. That's where you would try to narrow it down further. And you would try to look for these sort of sensitive information while you're doing the searches. And as you see with the example, this is you know something that you can come across because we did use a text extension as well and this is something that come up what you can do from here is that search for the ones that are disallowed you know allow means that it's allowing us to be able to to, to crawl through it it's allowing google to grow, crawl and see these things but disallowing the other ones you can actually test it out to see if you can see them or not in some cases you might be able to i have come across instances where I saw these things where it was marked as disallowed, but it allowed me to view it. So you might come across those things too, but that's just not it. We're using multiple different extensions and you might want to see what kind of extensions there that, that you're viewing. For us, for this example, I was able to find the text one and that's what I showed for this example. All right, let's go over to the next Google Talk query, which is going to be about discovering exposed databases. This one right here is going to be the file type, which we're saying it's a file type of SQL. And then in text, we want it to have password or username. That's what it's gonna to try to find out, password and username or user ID. So that's what it does. This dork attempts to find SQL database files that are exposed and might contain sensitive information, like I was mentioning, like passwords and user IDs. And honestly, databases should never be publicly accessible, but mistakes can happen, we're all human. So that could be like a human error, right? So let's go over and move over to the next part of it, which is finding exposed PHP my admin interfaces. Here's the query for that, which is going to be index of and then in the URL PHP my admin. So in the, it, so if we want to break it down, 
This command is telling Google to find web pages that have index of in their content and PHPMy admin in their URL because we are putting the in URL query here. So why is this an issue, right? Well, PHPMy admin interfaces should never be publicly accessible in my opinion, as they are used to manage databases and can give full control to anyone who can access that. This includes the ability to read, modify, or read any data in the database, right? So as an example, I'll show you what it looks like as well. So this is something, you know, when I was doing the searches or for this particular video, this is something that I came across. You can see a lot of this .php that's showing up under phpMyAdmin. If you were having to click on any one of these right here, what can happen is that it might bring you up to a page of phpMyAdmin where an attacker can try to brute force it to see if they can get in or see if there's anonymous access involved or not. Certain types, having anonymous access doesn't necessarily mean that it's vulnerable. Sometimes it's just there as uh, the owners puts it out there, no matter what the case might be. It's their portion of it, uh, their side of it, whatever they want to do. But even then, you could come across system owners who didn't realize that they added anonymous access where it shouldn't be allowed. You could report on those things to see what's happening. It might be denied, it might not be, but it's something worth trying. But you know, checking some of these things, my PHP admin login interface might come up. And honestly, they shouldn't be publicly accessible. I think they should be behind a firewall or something and some sort of ruling should be there. At least you know, give restricted access to who can access them or not, just, just so you know. But as you can see, you know, by using different Google dork operators, we can discover a wide range of potential vulnerabilities. This kind of information is so valuable that it tells us where our defenses might be lacking. So there you have it. That's some of the secret power of Google Docs for cybersecurity. It's like a tool for hackers, security researchers, pen testers, and it's kind of like a weapon for your de defense kind of a deal. Like you're finding these things, you're hunting them down, and you find these vulnerabilities, but you're doing them before a hacker can because if it's publicly available and you can see it, so can others, as long as they know how these type of queries. So it's crucial to remember that when you're doing this, that ethics should be involved. We must use Google Dorks to protect our website and not just our website, but others' website as well if you're doing bug bounty hunting researches, not to evade someone else's privacy or exploit their vulnerabilities, but instead to help them out to strengthen their organizations, right? But that is it for this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button, share it with anyone that you know that would be interested to help them secure their online presence as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting content. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.